Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Welcome to St. Rose of Lima Parish. If you're able, please stand and join in singing our gathering hymn, number 850. All are welcome. 850. Right. 
O God, you have prepared for those who love you good things which no eye can see. Fill our hearts, we pray, with the warmth of your love, so that loving you in all things, and above all things, we may attain your promises, which surpass every human desire. Through our Lord and to Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever. Amen. Amen.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, I am speaking to you Gentiles. Inasmuch as I am the apostle to the Gentiles, I glory in my ministry in order to make my race jealous, and thus save some of them. For if their rejection is the reconciliation of the world, what will their acceptance be but life from the dead? For the gifts of the call of God are irrevocable, just as you once disobeyed God, but have now received mercy because of their disobedience. So they have now disobeyed, in order that, by virtue of the mercy shown to you, they too may now receive mercy. For God delivered all to disobedience, that he might have mercy upon all. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Who 
doesn't answer to this woman in her request, and then his answer seems to make things worse. But let us take a few things into account. The first one is that the Gospels are very clear in showing us that Jesus knew the hearts of the people around him. He knew what lay in people's hearts. He knew, he was able to see the truth uh, behind, uh, the, the, uh, behind the walls that every person might put on. He was able to see the, the Pharisees' heart to approach him with false, uh, with false intentions. Uh, at first it seemed that they wanted to listen and learn but their intentions were to uh, be able to get Jesus into trouble and get rid of him. He knew uh, the, the heart of the woman who suffered from, uh, uh, for, from bleeding for years as she touched the tassel of his cloak, uh, of his, uh, of his cloak and, and then she was healed and she knew her intentions were right. Uh, he knew the, the intentions of those around him because he could see into the heart of every person. So, if we go back to that reading, let us now thinking of Jesus, looking at this woman, looking at her heart, and seeing her heart filled with faith, filled with a great confidence in, in Jesus, in His power, in His presence. In what, in what he could do for her and for her daughter. And seeing that heart is filled with faith, there is a time in which Jesus has the perfect opportunity to give a great lesson to the people who were following him. Now, let us remember that Israel, uh, they knew very well uh, who they were. They were the chosen people of God. God had made covenants with them all the way starting from uh, Abraham. And God established covenants with the people of Israel. And so they knew they had been a chosen nation. They knew that God had revealed to them uh, a wonderful uh, uh, manifestations of, of His glory and of what He desired for them to be. But as we see in the first reading, this uh, chosen of Israel was a way in which God was preparing something greater for, the all, for all the nations, for the whole world. God chose Israel, God wanted to prepare Israel so that Israel could do two things. One, draw people to God. Thus people saw how they lived and their faithfulness and, their, and in God's faithfulness to them other nations could be drawn to the revelation of God made to Israel and come to worship the God, the true God. And the other element of the revelation for the revelation of Israel, uh, for God choosing Israel, is that Israel not only draws people to God, but that Israel brings God to the nations. However, uh, because of human frailty, because of our human uh, brokenness, uh, Israel saw this great treasure of God's revelation and then thought that that treasure was to be kept just for themselves. And so, as they looked into their own lives and they saw themselves as chosen, they used that to uh, look down upon other nations, to reject uh, others who they, they called pagans, who were not chosen, who had not believed uh, in the true God. And so they rejected everyone else that was not part of Israel, of the chosen people. And by doing that, uh, they were uh, destroy their very identity. That identity that God had desired for them was destroyed because they were not doing what God had called them to do. So that they could be that element of grace 
to expand the God's revelation to the other nations. And so Jesus finds himself with, uh, at first, kind of like with that vision, I was only sent to the lost sheep of Israel. I don't care about anybody else outside. Perhaps Jesus is, is saying these words to bring more, more joyous people uh, into the conversation, into the situation, into what is happening. Perhaps those who were doubting him to be the Messiah, as they're listening how he rejects this woman who is a, a, a Canaanite, uh, as he rejects her, then it might be a good sign that he is the Messiah because he's doing what we're professing to do. So perhaps Jesus is bringing more people into, uh, into this situation. And as soon as Jesus catches everyone's attention, as soon as he has uh, literally rejected this woman's petition and told her that she doesn't deserve the bread for the children, which are Israel, and she, like a dog, doesn't deserve the food from the children's table, then uh, Jesus turns everything upside down. And he turns everything upside down by granting the woman what she desired. This is a lesson that Jesus is giving to Israel. You are the chosen people, but salvation is not just for you. You are the chosen people, but you are to draw people to you so that you can show them God. And you are also to go out to the other nations and bring people uh, to God. Is this what, this is uh, what Jesus ultimately did on the day of his ascension into heaven, as he tells his apostles, go to all, all the nations and baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and teach them everything that I have taught you. I think that this is very important that we understand uh, in our own lives, because we are the new Israel. We, the Church of Christ, has been chosen so that as people see our faith and our testimony, they're drawn to Christ. And also that we are called to bring Christ to other people, to go and evangelize and share the message of salvation. This is the very identity of the Church. And the Church may find it herself in the same position that Israel was at the time of Jesus. That when we think that evangelization is not part of what we need to do, when we think that, yes, this great message of salvation is so wonderful, and I'm going to keep it just here for myself, uh, then we are destroying that identity that God has built in our own lives, as, as He has chosen us to be His church, to be His people. He desires salvation for all. So he desires us to embrace everyone. Now, another important lesson that the Lord presents us in the Gospel, and I think it's so beautiful uh, to see how uh, this Gospel comes after last weekend's Gospel. Because you remember what happened last weekend in the story of the Gospel. There is a storm, the apostles are in the boat, that afraid Jesus comes walking on the water. Peter asks the Lord, if it is truly you, uh, uh, command that I walk on the water with you. He starts walking on the water, and then he starts sinking. And as he sinks, uh, the Lord reaches out to him and says to Peter, all oh, you of little faith, why did you doubt? Now, Let's go back again to, 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 to today's story. Now it is a foreigner, a pagan, who deserves a great compliment from Jesus. How great is your faith? That faith that Jesus didn't find in Israel, the faith that Jesus didn't find in his own town. He couldn't, the gospel tells us he couldn't do. Many, many, he couldn't perform many signs in his own town because he didn't find faith there. 
the faith that he didn't find in the religious leaders, in the Pharisees, in the scribes, in those who were at the temple. The faith he didn't find even in the apostles and in Peter, the leader of the apostles. That faith he finds in this woman, a foreigner woman, one had not been chosen as part of Israel. This woman gives us all a great example. An example of humility as, a, as she approached God in all humbleness. And an example of great faith. No one in Israel deserved uh, that compliment from Jesus. As I recall, only two people in the gospel, and both of them were pagans. One is uh, the centurion, the Roman centurion, who asked Jesus to heal his, uh, his slave. Uh, the one who said, Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say a word and my servant shall be healed. And this woman in today's gospel. What a great and beautiful example uh, these two pagans give us today. Uh, I know that uh, I've known many people who don't belong to the church, many people uh, who don't belong to our faith, but have shown a great example of faith and goodness. Uh, uh, to me and to so many people. They are the people to admire. But as also we admire the great faith of others outside of the flock of the church, let us not lose our identity, that in our own lives, in our own families, in our own vocations, in our own state of life, we're called to draw people to God and to bring people to God as well through our works and through our words. Let us pray for, let us profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, the Father of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one the Lord Jesus Christ the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God of God, light from light, true God of true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through whom all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For us he was crucified and apostles Pilate,
for those departed, particularly Lucretia de Infante, who died this week. May they live forever in Christ's love, especially John McCarthy, for whom this Mass is being offered. May they be raised up on the last day to live forever. We praise the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, like the Canaanite woman who approached Jesus with great faith, we approach you today with our faith. Increase our faith and help us to follow Christ with all our hearts, bringing him to others. All of these we ask through Christ our Lord. Amen. As our gifts are presented and the altar is prepared, please turn and sing in our offertory hymn, number 832. In Christ there is no east or west. 832.
God and the Spirit of Father that they will do for that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord and Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold Him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the sacrament of life. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word of my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Complete within us, the Lord, we pray the healing work of your mercy and graciously perfect and sustain us so that in all things we may please you through Christ our Lord. Amen. This past week, uh, on behalf of our entire community, uh, the panel sent a tithe of a thousand dollars to the rebuilding efforts uh, in Hawaii. Uh, all of that is thanks to your generosity. You know that part of our stewardship is 10% uh, of our income goes to uh, works of charity uh, and to, to work of evangelization, uh, not only in our community but beyond. Uh, our community. So thanks for, for your continued support. I'd like to invite you to take a seat for a moment. Um, I have two more announcements and we have someone special joining us this evening. Uh, my other announcement is that we are only $1,700 away from reaching goal of our pharmacy charity. As you know, this is a yearly campaign that provides the funds for uh, uh, three areas of, of the work of the church in, in Worcester County, education, evangelization, and charity. Uh, I know historically the parish has always uh, uh, fulfilled the goal and even gone, gone over and over of uh, the goal. Uh, so uh, the campaign is, is finishing uh, this, this month of, of August. So I'd like to make an appeal to parishioners who have not yet participated if you uh, can make your donation and participate in this wonderful campaign. There are still envelopes uh, at the ends of the pews, of some of the pews, uh, or you can do it directly on the uh, Policy Charity website. You can get to it through our own website. The Women's Club is inviting all members and all, their, and all women to join them for the Get Acquainted uh, social event that is happening uh, on September, I believe it's the 9th, the 8th, September 8th, uh, so all women are invited, there will be some members of the club and the gathering space available if you have any questions. And also, uh, next weekend we will be celebrating our patron saints in Rose of Lima. Uh, we'll be welcoming Father Barbara Roddy to this Mass, uh, and after Mass we will be having our uh, event for uh, a Thanksgiving event to all our volunteers. Uh, so we we invite you to join us. Uh, and also, if you haven't placed your request for roses, uh, this, is, this is your last chance. The deadline is Monday. Uh, you can request your roses using the envelopes that are in the gathering space or on our website. We'll have white roses for all our loved ones who are deceased and red roses for those who are living. And then we'll decorate the church with all the roses that are requested. Uh, so please plan on joining us next weekend uh, for the beautiful celebration of our patron saint. And uh, her official date is this Wednesday. Uh, so Wednesday, the Holy Hour, will be dedicated to the honor of St. Rosa Lima. And after over a year and a half of prayer and uh, supplication for a new youth minister, as you might have read in the bulletin last weekend, we have a new youth minister. I'd like to welcome uh, Marisol Bermudez Ellis. Uh, she has a few words for us this, this afternoon. So welcome Marisol to our family. Um, not when I'm nervous like now, but 
But um, yeah, so um, I'm, I'm really excited to bring some like um, some you know energy and faith to um, our young um, parishioners, especially um, and developing um, a relationship with all of them. Uh, and um, so uh, I look forward to um, meeting all the parents, volunteers, and, um, and obviously the young uh, kids of the community so that together we can um, work together to, uh, you know, build our faith together and, um, and start a, a new program and have fun while we're growing our faith together. So. I'm really happy to be here, and I hope to meet all of you. So, you know, when you see me around, please say hello. I love to meet you. Thank you, Melissa. Well, it's a great blessing to finally have uh, you the minister, and uh, she's going to get the ball rolling uh, this fall with all the other programs uh, and activities for our youth. Uh, please try some of us. The Lord is to be with you. With your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you all, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Glorify the Lord by your life. Thank, Thank you, God. God. Have a wonderful rest of your evening. Love you all. Thank you, God. As we go forth to share our love and life, please join in our closing hymn, number 644. There's a wide in God's mercy. 644. Mm -hmm.